returns 98% of its scoring from a year ago. But it's also depth for Seminoles. Clara Robbins, Jenna Swanger, and then off the bench, Yuji Zhao coming in last year and scoring three goals and having five assists. Matter of fact, Trevor, 18 goals last year of the 41 that Florida State scored came off the bench. So Florida State, they come at you with waves, and it's going to be a high-pressing system. The Noles will keep the ball for maybe 60% of the match, and it'll be up to Texas A&M to pick and choose their moments to take advantage and capitalize. Absolutely agree. That's going to be the big challenge. Uh, for the Texas A&M, can they get the ball back and can they make that first pass, second pass, string cat passes together to work their way and get Florida State out of their shape? And a unity statement being announced here at the Seminole Soccer Complex, so we'll take a, a second to lay out. Thank you. And so here we go. One of the best teams in the ACC, the preseason favorites, taking on the preseason favorites of the SEC. Mark Krikorian said, look, this is one of the most talented teams, veteran teams we've ever had, maybe the most veteran team we've ever had. Coach Guerrero says, hey, Texas A&M, they're here to stay. We're ready to give Florida State a fight. We're underway in Tallahassee on a Thursday night ACC, SEC showdown, and college soccer is back. And you already see right out of the gate, Jalen Howell trying to make something happen for Jody Brown. Just a diagonal ball, just up the right flank. Trying to showcase that speed that Florida State's forwards have this season. And our first look at Miley Hayes going up against Emily Madrill, winning a throw in for Texas A&M Aggies in the maroon tops and maroon bottoms with the white stripes across Florida State in all white, white tops, white bottoms. As Madrill now in the center back position, she started her career at outside back. A couple of ACL injuries put a pause on her career in Tallahassee, but she came back in a, a storming force last year for Florida State, one of the best players in the country. She was on the Mac Herman Award watch list this year. The Knowles have three of them, and it's one of five teams in the entire country to have at least three on the watch list. Now to Gabby Carl, gold medal winner. For Team Canada in the Olympics, knocking off Sweden. The Canadians also knocked off the United States in the semifinals. The U.S. going on to win bronze in a thriller against Australia. Now you see early on here, Texas A&M is just going to crowd themselves back. They're going to pit themselves back and just kind of stay all together and not let Florida State have any any passing lanes. But this is also what Florida State likes too. This is car this is exactly in the blueprint. They like to smother their opponent with ball control. They don't mind having being patient. And that's the thing about Florida State. They are the most patient team in all of college soccer, according to Coach Geary. And that's exactly right. Florida State does not mind just hanging onto the ball for as long as they want. They can hold on, and they can make things happen over time. Chip over the top flag goes up as Lynch ran onto it. Matter of fact, Coach Guerrero said Florida State's the most patient team he has ever seen. And he said, I've been doing this a long time. Nobody is as patient moving the ball side to side as Florida State. And he said, look, we're going to have to be comfortable without being on the ball. But when we do get the ball, and we will get the ball, we've got to be direct with our play and get up the pitch and be able to find that goal. And I think it speaks a lot too, Aria, given how much talent we talk about all the time about Florida State. The fact that they're also selfless and they want to work with each other and make themselves a, a, a whole team all together, work together and make the best opportunities for the team, not just for an individual player. There's number 16, Macy Cole, her first action that we get to see tonight. Florida State, though, wins possession. Foul called from head ref. The official is Leland Grant tonight. Blue top, black bottom. See him on the right side of your screen. If the Florida State will earn the kick. The Seminoles have won 13 consecutive opening days here in Tallahassee. Florida State's 9-0 all-time at home under Mark Krikorian on opening days. Here is Carl trying to slip it through, finds Howell. Back to Carl. Carl trying to weave her way, and it's intercepted. Now possessed by Texas A&M. That was Olivieri. And Florida State quickly again back on the ball. That's what FSU likes to do. When they lose it, they emphasize, get back on the ball. The best defense is having a pretty good offense. That's right. That's just ball possession is their defense in a lot of different, in a lot of ways. But they just, they don't like not having the ball. They like having the ball. And when they don't have it, they will harp on it to get it back. Ham on a biscuit. Robbins wins the throw for Florida State. A great story. You see the, the knee brace on her right leg. 
Robbins has battled multiple injuries and last year just came on strong in the spring for Florida State. And as has Emily Madrill, as you just saw there, number 25. She's also had a bit of an injury-riddled career, but she's also on that Mac Herman watch list. You see a and has got all 11 players behind the ball, something Florida State got very used to as the year went on last season. Now a and in transition. Can they find anything on the counter? Howell sticks her foot in there to mess things up. Talk about the intensity well, you of Jalen Howell. You just see her close, and that's what Oliveri is going to have to get used to with Jalen Howell. If you have Howell in a matchup, you have got to know where you're going to go with the ball quick because Jalen Howell is going to take it away from you more likely than not. Yeah, five goals last season for Jalen Howell, a couple assists. The Mac Herman Award winner in 16 matches. She's gotten some time with the U.S. Women's National, National Senior Team. Oh, what a force for Florida State to have that. You think about players who had accomplished so much before just their senior year. Amanda DaCosta in the midfield, Dagny Brynjus' daughter, already so accomplished. There's a different level and a different presence, and, and I think it rubs off on your teammates a little bit differently, almost like an aura. Yeah, you, you, can, you can recognize leaders when they enter the room, and that's what Jalen Howell is, and she's learned a little bit from that. You know, she was on the 2018 National uh, Championship team, as are some of her teammates here, but she took that mantle of, of leaders such as Dana Castellanos and Malia, and, and Malia Berkeley. You know, all of them had such a tremendous impact on this team over the last several years, and certainly Jalen has picked up a lot of that leadership ability from those and it's carried over and, and into her own right. She's her own leader in a unique way. Back line here, 17, Getzik. Her first touches of the game. See if AM can possess the ball for, for little spells. Coach Guerrero said we've got to do better when we get the ball because most teams just wilt under Florida State's pressure. And you see a touch and it's going to go the way of AM. Hesitant call there from the side judge. And a quick throw, Olivieri. Can she do anything here against number eight, Lauren Flynn? Flynn does well, the sophomore from Arlington, Virginia. 15 games a season ago, six games started. And after Malia Barkley said goodbye to Florida State in the fall semester, beautiful touch there. Now Florida State, what can they do with it? It's intercepted. But Berkeley left, Flynn was inserted at that center back position, and she really thrived with Emily Madrill. The, the combo got better as the year went on. They gave up only two goals in the NCAA tournament, and eight the entire season in 16 games. Yeah, I think that's going to be a big help because she had to transition to center back for the tournament. She didn't start out that way in the 2020 season in that ACC only schedule for them So and for Lauren Flynn. So she's going to be, I think, the key to see how legit and it already is obviously legit with how much talent's back there and how effective all four of them are. But she's the key to really bring it all together for Florida State to be a lockdown defense once again. Her sister Megan played at Tennessee. Her dad golfed at George Washington. So an athletic family. The Flynn's are from Arlington, Virginia. And a whistle here on 13, Mia Pante, a freshman that Texas A&M is extremely excited about. Scored a brilliant goal against Baylor in the exhibition for the Aggies the other day, and you look at that. Yeah, just a little shove in the back to Jenna Nyswanger, bringing her down. Another Canadian international, by the way. She's been on the U-17 team, so Canada, you know, they're riding some highs right now in the world of soccer, obviously, with the Olympic team winning the gold medal, but a lot of up-and-comers, too. Canada's really growing. And Quick restart for Florida State. It's a pretty good ball. Doing better with it, though, was Miley Hayes. Robbins kept it in. And now A&M in a little bit of trouble as the ball goes, goes towards the touchline. And Florida State again repossesses. This is what they do. They put the pressure on you in your attacking third, in your defensive third, I should say. Piazza Olsen in particular right there, right on the end line, Aria, was the one who disrupted and got FSU its possession back. So it's not just Jalen Howell and those defenders. It's those attackers who want the ball, too. Carl weaving her way, looking for a pass. Across, it was deflected. Corner number one has been one for Florida State here this evening. They just, they're just so well conditioned, Aria. That's just the key. And here's Beata again. You see Claire Robbins. Nice job by, by Hayes. You know she's in her forward position, but just right when you, right when you think you can control and relax and analyze, you can't. You can't rest because these Florida State attackers are going to be on defense as well. 
they're just buzzards around 10 feet, and you have to move the ball. Ball, all about ball movement if you're an opponent of Florida State. It'll be Robbins doing the honors for Florida State. Right footed, in swinging ball. Towards the goal it goes, strong is Caldwell. She goes up sure handed. And Kenna Caldwell from Lone Tree, Colorado, same hometown of Jalen Howell. They played on opposite club teams from the same hometown. I am intrigued to see the matchup again if you see obviously a corner or a set piece and Jalen's right around Kenna Caldwell to see how that matchup progresses over the course of the night. Coach Guerreri had nothing but high praise for Kenna Caldwell, the junior. Apparently she's a TikTok star as well, so she's got a lot of things going for her. Brown tried the back heel, couldn't get it cleanly, and now AM on the restart. Pavlisko intercepts down the right side, working against a pair of Aggie defenders. It's taken away by 17, Getzik. Ball crosses the touchline for a throw for Florida State. Another point on, on Kenna Caldwell in a moment, but taking a look at Pavlisko trying to disrupt. Just gets in front of it very easily. And Pavlisko is just such a speedy outside defender. Along with Carl, those two on the wings for the for Florida State's back four can really generate attacks. Oh, Robbins clipped. Could this be a card for a and I don't believe anyone will go into the book. And 13, Mia Pante. Maybe a bit fortunate here as Robbins had gotten through. At matter of fact, stepping in, I believe it was 17, Getzik. Nope. It was 17, gets it. Boy, it's tough to see the front of those uniforms with the white numbers on the uh, mix and match. They remind me if you're a Florida soccer fan of the Tampa Bay Rowdies, who also wear those stripes but with different colors. So this is a little bit easier, I think. Florida State on the set piece. Nice longer left. He puts it in. Howell really strong in the air. Got a flick onto it, but doesn't test Caldwell there. And so it'll be a gold kick. Jalen Howell. Returning after winning the Mac Herman Award for Florida State, the senior from Lone Tree, Colorado, her 64th career start here in Tallahassee. Ball booted ahead, doing well on it is Hayes. Hayes into the 18, finds McDonald, her shot deflected, calls for a handball, not rewarded by Leland Grant, the official. But that's better from AM, their first real chance of the night. How about Miley Hayes coming in here as a true freshman? First game of the year against number one. Gets an excellent service ball. It just works her way right around Lauren Flynn very nicely. Tries to set it up. Samples right there. Got the elbow it looked like of Carl. Now she does elevate it from her torso. This will be that's a really good look here. Oh, underneath the that, arm. That so that's, looks, that's close. That's a very close call with no call. And Carl might have got away with one. Texas A&M could certainly have a case right there. An early opportunity, though, for Texas A&M has got to feel good. Just generating opportunities like that, knowing what Florida State's capable of in ball possession. Now nice Swanger receives the ball. The outside of the 18 to Aggies quickly get their whistle. That'll be another free kick for Florida State. The Knoll's so good in possession, Trevor, but they're really good at set pieces as well. As the Knolls looked like they wanted to go for a quick restart. Leland Archer, excuse me, Leland Grant says, excuse me. Not so fast, my friends. Well, you saw Carlina sample. She did not like that call at all. And you saw what Florida State likes to do. They have a lot of gamesmanship. They are very respectful, but they want to catch you off guard at the same time. And you see how quick and organized they are. That's the organization that Mark Corian brings on a year-to-year -year basis of how organized they are and knowing where they want to go with the ball quickly. It'll be nice, Swanger with the left foot. In swinging ball, Howell rises, flicks it up, and it'll go. Still in play, matter of fact, thought it might roll out. Florida State's on it, Flynn turns the corner, tries to use the left foot, Madrill now runs on to it. A pair of Florida State backliners up high on the pitch. Nice, Swanger on her preferred left foot. Carl, well done by McDonald. A&M, dangerous moments here. Brown, can she get on her right foot? Swiveling and great defending from Katie Smith, the captain. Boy, a bit of chaos right there around the 18-yard box. First, the in-swinging set piece by Nicewanger. It's no secret who she's trying to go for. It's Jalen Howell, and she did not miss by much. That slow-mo is sweet. Shout out to the production team here. 
in Tallahassee. They're giving you the best camera work and production team in the ACC, no doubt about it. Hey, we've been off for quite some time, Aria. These guys are in our production team. Uh, you know, I wouldn't trade them for anybody, and they are itching to really showcase what kind of camera and, and views they have in store for all you folks at home. A&M trying to find the icebreaker here in Tallahassee. That's 19 Bates. The other co-captain loses the ball. Carl's on it. Carl fortunate. Given that Macy Cobb coming up from the back line. Had a chance to go on the outside for a run. To enter the 18-yard box as well. Pavlisko looking for the long ball. Madrill onto it. Can she get there in a foot race? One-on-one -on -one against Smith. It goes across the line for a goal kick. That is excellent defending by the captain from Tulsa. But how about this ball forward? Robbins trying to harp on it in Pavlisko. You know, we, we, we tend to see her, Ari, over the course of her career run with the ball, but she found an opportunity for Clara Robbins to track it down. But Katie Smith, a couple of sequences where she is not letting FSU's attackers get the best of her. Robbins, Howell, Carl supporting from her back line. Ball was loose, oh, some miscommunication there, but Caldwell hurries onto it. Jody Brown lurking on the far side. And that was a theme when we talked about when we talked to Coach Gregorian about how, with all this possession that Florida State enjoys, how do you create quality chances? Because teams are going to be comfortable sitting back 10, 11 behind the ball. Florida State last year, look, they did make the national championship game. But they didn't score a goal in regulation against Duke or Virginia, two teams that know them well. The Knowles needed PKs to get across, and then their luck ran out against Santa Clara in the, ch in the championship game. Trevor, how do you create more quality chances from all this possession? Well, I think it, 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 part of it could be personnel, Aria. I think with the styles, with each plays. You know, we talked about Kristen McFarland. You know, I don't think she possessed perhaps the speed that these forwards do this year for Florida State. But, you know, it also didn't frustrate them. You know, they kept on and stuck to their, stick to their structure. And it worked out for them in the end. You know, up until the national championship game, it got them to that championship game. And then sometimes your luck does run out and just fortunate or just or however fortunate or unfortunate things happen for you. But in terms of creating chances, you know, I think that's going to be, you know, a process. It's still very early in the season. It's a new year uh, with new personnel getting different opportunities. So I think that's something they're going to have to figure out. But, you know, I think, you know, they're going to maybe have to experiment more with the through ball opportunities, perhaps. And they're, uh, tonight, they're looking for long balls at the moment. They're putting the ball more in the air, working the wings. We'll see if they can try and work the middle a little bit more. Madrill. That's a beautiful ball. This is good soccer from Florida State. Brown into the 18, stops on a dime, looking for a teammate, flicks it out. Nice swanger, so drops that, it back to Pavliska. So there's that through ball, Aria. Created a chance to get into the 18. Didn't get a shot on goal, but at least it got Texas A&M's eye, uh, eye attention. Howell now to Carl. Carl looking for a teammate, punches it out wide. Here's Lynch onto her left foot. She goes down, ball crosses the touch line. Is that going to be a corner? Yes, it is. Number two for Florida State now on the evening. And Trevor, Florida State, the key might be excellent through balls, trying to find different ways to build up. That ball to Nyswanger and then quickly to Brown. Yeah, just one pass after another. Nyswanger is really generating, her, really creating a lot of chances for her teammates. She had the goal in the national championship game, a very excellent cut across the box for a goal, too. Ball in the air. Who's going to get on the end of it? It rolls out. Last touch by a player in white. Might have been Beata Olsen. It was Olsen. It was going for Jalen Howell again. It was a little bit outside of where Howell was positioned. She was a little bit more towards the six. Olsen was able to get ahead on it, but couldn't get back in time to redirect towards the net. Seven goals a season ago for the Florida Gators. And she just a little bit up I-75, a little bit west on I-10. She's got a new home in Tallahassee and a perennial winner. That'll be interesting when she has to play her former team. I believe that's in a couple of weeks. It's at the start of the month. Won't be long now. Just got to get, get through, uh, through a few games here. Got to take a road trip to Colorado. And I'll be right back here for a sun, sunshine showdown. Carl, gold medal winner with Canada in the Olympics. Slips it ahead, ball goes out. Is that another corner? Yes, it is for Florida State. How cool would that, must that have been for Gabby Carl? Only appeared in one match for Canada. But the career that Christine Sinclair has had, 
to cap that off with a gold medal meant everything to one of the best players of all time. And Gabby Carl had a front row seat. Clara Robbins has a front row seat to this corner kick. She does the honors. Oh, he's recording. Right foot in swinging ball near post. Uh, she overcooked it. Uh, she'll want to do better with that as it goes into the side netting. Already three or four corners for Florida State, so they're working the ball outside quite a bit. Trying to get Lynch and Jody Brown a lot of work. Really trying to test how fast and quick Texas A&M is on that back line, especially on the outside. There's Getzik. Pante back to Getzik. Brown pressuring, wins the ball. Through ball now to Olsen. Is she onto it? Into the end line. Oh, she just first touched, let her down. Taylor Pounds coming up and securing and bailing out Kenna Caldwell from a shot to be put on net. You just see the pursuit by Florida State. They just do not rest. They do not rest. They are just so pursuant to the ball. And an excellent through ball, just maybe a little bit too much too much weight, a little strong for Olsen to fire the ball and pull the trigger. And we do have our first substitution of the evening. A fan favorite, Yuji Zhao in Tallahassee. She has made her way onto the pitch. Christina Lynch takes a seat. There she is, 33, Yuji Zhao. 66 career games played before tonight. 48 starts last year, though. The Knowles moved her to the bench, added her as depth. And that just speaks to the level of talent Florida State has on this roster. But Zhao was very important in that postseason run for FSU. Yeah, I mean, she was just so instrumental. She had a great freshman year, too, that won the national championship for them. See the two-time United Soccer Coaches All-American, 2018 being one of them. And a three-time All-ACC member. Olsen does well to win the ball back, looking for teammates and support. Nice Swanger. Looked inside, now dropped it back. Howell dissects the field, pushes it out wide to Clara Robbins. You see, most teams, Aria, would want to try and take advantage of that run. But you see, Florida State, as we've been saying, they are so patient. They do not mind trying to settle things down and set things up for the perfect look that they want. Solid work. There from Carlina Sample, as Howell guilty of the foul. Sample, the SEC co-defender of the year a season ago, worked her way back from a season-ending injury in 2019. Coach Guerrero said this is the anchor of our back line. She is, simply put, probably the best defender in the SEC. And gosh, A&M might have two of the best between her and the center pack duo of Katie Smith. Yeah, we've already seen Katie Smith disrupt some near-chance opportunities for the Seminoles. So you can just tell those, well you can tell why those two are captains on that back line and how Texas A&M operates as a defensive unit. Florida State switches the field, Brown not able to corral it with her first touch. Can A&M take advantage here? Pante drops it back, gets it. Those two have had a connection early on in the first half. Oh, that's nasty. Great little dummy there. And then another one was attempted by Miley Hayes, but unfortunately no teammate was running onto the ball behind her. So now Florida State will restart. And that's what they have to do. Just one, two, three passes like that, but you just can't let something like that allow Florida State to just get back into their comfort zone. So they're just going to, Texas A&M has got to get, string together passes in time with the ball and then just go. A drill. Senior to senior, senior duo. Howell. Robbins loses the ball, running onto it and cleaning it up. It was nice, Swanger. Nice ball ahead. Carl, overlapping run, looking for a teammate. That touch from Nice Swanger. Unable to be capitalized on just yet for Florida State. And Sample does well to just boot it forward. Again, now AM, you look, they've got nobody in support. Trying to play direct. And that is Pante. But the strategy obviously clear for AM. Squeeze the gaps, try and win with some speed and athleticism over the top. Santa Clara, Coach Guerrero said, had six players that he felt could really make something happen one on one after Santa Clara won the ball in that national title game. And even then, you could argue Florida State looked the better team, not just in regulation, but in overtime. Santa Clara, you don't want to call it luck, but penalty kicks are a, a terrorizing way for any game to end. And Santa Clara just came away 
with the PK shootout. Well, Jerry Smith knows what he's doing, too. I mean, he's been around the, blo around the block a lot as well. Second on the all-time wins list among the active head coaches for Santa Clara. So he orchestrated that. He went with that game plan. Sometimes it works. Florida State's so successful, though, oftentimes it doesn't. But depends on if you have the talent, if you have the right people in place, and to execute that game plan. And Coach Gary is one of those, one of those those has one of those teams and is one of those coaches who is comfortable doing that if he has to. Here is Carl. Has it knocked away? It'll be a corner again for Florida State. Because it depends on faith and trust in your players as well, Ari. And that's what Coach Gary has. If you don't have it, then you're going to have to do make do with what you can. And, and speaking with arguably the GOAT of college coaching and Anson Dorrance, he said, look, Florida State's going to have the ball a lot, and you've got to have players that can individually win one-on-one -on -one battles. That's how North Carolina has had some success against Florida State in the last decade. you got to have players. And they, when they get the ball, you've got to have indiv individual quality because Florida State's like a boa constrictor. They will squeeze the life out of you. And sometimes it's a 1-0 win, sometimes it's a 5-0 win if the dam breaks. And we'll see if Florida State can find the opening act here from Yuji Zhao. Sends it in. Ball's loose. Jody Brown got ahead onto it. But in the end, it wasn't really on goal, and Caldwell watched it go by the side post. Yeah, deep corner by Yuji Zhao. Again, Florida State really working the angles of going outside. And for the most part, Texas A&M has held on. Kenneth Caldwell has not had to make some game-changing saves as of yet. But as you said, Ari, that boa constrictor mentality by Florida State is taking hold. And, you know, if you're a piece of coal, you can either get crushed or you become a diamond. And so far, it hasn't cracked just yet for the Aggies. And sometimes for Florida State, you know, the mistake happens 85 minutes into a game like it did against Santa Clara. But when that moment comes, and Coach Guerrero said it, when that moment does come, you have to be clinical in the finish. And Florida State knows that. Uh, th that's why they try to possess. And Florida State wants to put balls into the net early in the first half and kind of suck the will out of you. That's right. It is, it's, that's, it's like an hourglass, or just it's a matter of time before they, can, before they capitalize sometimes. And sometimes they do get the early goal, and they keep on scoring, and they generate opportunities at will. But, yeah, this is, this is, this is blueprint number one for Florida State. they got multiple blueprints. They can make sort, all sorts of different houses, constructed any way they want in a lot of different ways. But this is textbook for the Seminoles. Yeah, Mark Krikori, and you just saw a shot of him there in his 17th season. 14 of the 16 years that he's been here, Florida State has made the Elite Eight and has finished in the top 10 of the country. Nobody else has been that successful. I believe it's 15 of the last 17 in that statistic area for top 10s. I mean, that is just unheard of. That is unbelievable. And I don't think it's ridiculous to say over the last 15 years, no program has been better than Florida State. More consistent, has made more college cups, has made deeper runs. That's what FSU does. You've got senior national team members from 10, 10 different countries all over the pitch at any given time. And it really is the premier program in college soccer. There really is no debate anymore. Players like that, Flynn, Howell, who no doubt will be playing pro at the end of this year. Carl, senior national team member of Canada. A gold medal winner in the Olympics. Zhao, Chinese international, Good to a Jamaican international. Jody Brown, what can she do with the ball? One time from Zhao towards the back post. Questions being asked. Here's Nyswanger. Turns it on the side of the 18. Going to work one on one. Can she beat her defender? That is Macy Cole. And AM wins the ball back. Great work by the Aggies. Now what can they do with it? As Florida State's trying to press them in their defensive half. Able to be knocked forward, but again, so much effort and so much intensity is required by the, de the defense who plays Florida State. Yeah, the Knowles get the ball right back. Yeah, you see Miley Hayes. I mean, it, this is her first college game, too. I mean, it's just a tall order for her. And she's holding her own in a lot of ways. She already had an opportunity to run onto the ball and set up a, 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 a teammate of hers in the 18-yard box, but... It's going to be players like her and Makaya McDonald over there on the right wing along with her. You know, those are freshmen coming in that really need to make a difference, but they're going to have to depend on their athleticism to win the ball and to make things happen. 11, Pavlisko putting the ball over oh, the top. What a flick from Robbins. <laughs> Brown just maybe a half step slow in reading that and getting to the ball. Just the angle goes back, Arya. That is probably, that would have been a, 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 a sick 
of a pass is probably we've ever seen here. And that, that's saying something here. We've seen a lot here at the soccer, Seminole Soccer Complex. That would have been something special. Flynn, a little hezzy, gets ahead the pitch. Now out wide, Carl tried to go first time. And nice longer, not on the same page as her teammate, was checking two instead. So now AM trying to play direct. Here's the ball forward for Miley Hayes, and beating her in a foot race was Emily Madrill. So a little freshman connection for McDonald and Hayes trying to generate that attack. So we haven't heard much from Barbara Olivier Olivieri just yet. With the exception of maybe a mention in the first part as you see her matched up with Jalen Howell. Howell goes down, advantage given to Florida State. Here's Carl with the left foot to Robbins. Ball played ahead, bit of a heavy ball. The Pavliska runs onto it. Deflected and Caldwell. Easy scoop there for the junior. Seven shutouts a year ago for Caldwell in 12 starts, only allowed 11 goals. She's not just a fantastic keeper, Aria, but when she was in club soccer with the Colorado Rush, she was both the offensive and defensive MVP. You want to talk about an all-around all All-American kind of a player, or just an all-world type of player? She can do anything she can to help her team. That's the kind of teammate she was with the Rush, and she's really come a long way, as Coach, Coach Gary has told us, in her development as a keeper, and she's proven herself. And this is a, this is a loaded roster in terms of keepers as well. Chantel Hutton has the most experience on this team in terms of starts with 20 and she had a she has the freshman freshman record with five straight shutouts. So this is a this is a team with a lot of loaded depth as a keeper in case one of them goes down or one of them struggles. Coach Gary can call in another one to come in and, re, and, and reprieve and relieve uh, to really get the job done. And without a doubt uh, and Trevor you look at Guerrero there uh, alongside uh, some great assistant coaches and AM again they, they've switched into the SEC from the Big 12 about now 10 years. And you see some more substitutions here for Florida State. And AM has quickly become the premier team in the Southeastern Conference. As you see Leilani Nesbitt for the first time here this evening. Emma Bissell coming in, the UK international. Got a handful of changes, we'll work to get you that. Also seeing Maria Alago out there, Aria as well. We also have Ron Ewai into the match, the Japanese international. So Florida State, about 13 minutes, 13.45 left here in the first half. Trying to give some players a breather. And the depth will be on display here for the Seminoles. There is Emma Bissell, 17. And Bissell, the English international. He said her hope is to one day represent the senior national team for her country. Is into the match for her first action in the collegiate game in the United States. Debuted for Man City at the age of 16. Not bad. She can go for long spurts too. She holds a high school record from the 1500 meters. Just that just shows you how what Mark Corian likes. Not only does he want skill, he wants stamina. He wants durability. He wants players that can go the distance. And they're going to be able to go the distance with how much depth he's going to be able to utilize and getting a lot of players some valuable playing time. How? Pavlisko Zhao creates some space, finds a teammate. Knowles will work the ball around now. They'll switch attacking points and come from the left side. Not a great pass there, intercepted. But again, Florida State works so quickly to get onto it. Here is Howell. Deep with holding center midfielder for FSU. Up ahead to Zhao. Zhao clips it forward. Going down was Maria Pereira, the Portuguese international. And now Madril can get up the pitch. Again, Pereira to Carl. And that rolls out for a goal kick for AM. Yeah, Carl did a great interview with Andre Fernandez of the Tallahassee Democrat earlier this week about her chronicles in Tokyo. Says she put her gold medal in two socks on the way back to Quebec. So 
that's good security device, I think, right there. It's like, there's nothing in my socks. What are you talking about? It's just, you know, other socks or <laughs> something like that. It's a good a good way of uh, not letting that thing be noticed, that, that prized medal. And our team here at Florida State has a feature with Gabby Carl talking about her Olympic gold. That'll play at some point this season, maybe even tonight. So stay tuned, Florida State fans, for some great halftime content. Still nil-nil here in Tallahassee. Flynn Howell. Again, Florida State wins it back. How about that? From Pereira. Still Pereira. It's still Pereira getting onto the end of it. Still working hard. Tenacity from the Portuguese international. Now the Bermudan, Leilani Nesbeth. Pavlisco. Madrill. Excellent job of just not giving up on the play. Just fighting through that defense. Excellent ball. Oh, Eli, Gabby Carl. Oh, yeah, the flag was up. And I know sometimes fans may be wa watching and be saying, oh, come on, like, when is the moment going to happen? Well, like we've been saying, it's a patience game for Florida State. They are very comfortable. They don't get frustrated often because they have the ball, because they can generate an opportunity. When you're not on your heels as much, those emotions don't necessarily come out. Mark Corian's club has been, and his staff, definitely stresses that. Don't get frustrated because you're going to have the ball more likely than not, as long as you commit to yourself on the defensive end to get the ball back. And Florida State's trying to uh, employ that strategy here today. Strong defending by Olivieri. Knocks down Madrill. Pavlisko running on to the end of it. That's a big time tackle. But the foul called that I believe it was given behind off the advantage when Madrill went down. Looked like Getzik was in on that one against Pavlisko. Aggressive tackling. You gotta give Texas A&M credit. I mean, there's not a lot, been a lot of shots on the net for Florida State thus far in this first game. Yeah, just one each. So a lot of possession for Florida State. And a lot of early corners that Florida State had have not come as of late in the last 20 minutes or so. You could argue A&M's had the best chance of the evening. And sometimes that happens with Florida State. You know, sometimes, you know, in the first half, you know, they're not exactly maybe locked in. It's a feeling out process usually in games like this. So but usually that's the case. There's an opportunity though. Nesbitt knocks it up ahead to Pereira. And again, Really good defending by Getzik, who has been active in the first half. The sophomore from Houston can get up the pitch, too, for a &M. She had three strikes that found the back of the net last season for the Aggies. Yeah, she's a two-way player for sure. I mean, they list her as a forward and a defender. So she can come up. She has been, She goes deep into the corners with the ball if she's in that position area. So she can set her teammates up very nicely. And she's, you know, one of four Aggies on the TDS midseason freshman top 100 from a year ago. I mean, you want to talk about, it, yes, it, it kind of is a youth movement in a sense for Texas A&M, but they got a lot of talent coming up coming up the ranks that could be here for a long time and could be a force to be reckoned with for years to come. Here's a substitution in for A&M, Megan Morgan from Weston, Florida, back in her home state. Got to check that, Natalie Abel. Had my rosters mixed up. From Rancho Mission, Viejo, California, 22. So she's into the game for a and Abel. Getting Olivieri a bit of a break. It was Carissa Beckman, who is also into the game. Olivieri out. So both teams making a handful of substitutions. Also a chance to really see what you have. As the half winds down, obviously it's a chance for your starters to rest up for the second half. but. I mean, this is an opportunity to see what kind of talent each of, and the depth that's getting tested that both teams preach about, both coaching staffs love to see. But they're really, they're, they're really anticipating and excited to see what they can produce. Flynn Madrill cuts it back inside, trying to look for seams. Has Zhao with some space. The weighted pass, Nesbeth couldn't run onto it. It was deflected. Florida State still has it. Bissell. Back post, nobody home. 
A little bit too heavy with the cross. Again, that's going to be the key for Florida State. They've gotten a little bit better finding those pockets of space that can be in more dangerous and advant advantageous positions. But for the most part, A&M's been okay allowing Florida State to move the ball around. But they've squeezed the gaps, not allowing many good looks. Yeah, I mean, usually Zhao is one of the best with the ball in the center, and if you give her space, it's almost like you forget about it in a lot of cases. But, you know, you got to have teammates come through and be in the right positions to set up those opportunities. And, you know, this is a Florida State team that's really seeing what they have for the first time with Pistol, and you got to have others like Ronnie Y over there to really be in the right positioning. It's going to take time, though. This is obviously the first game of the season for both squads. But both are certainly capable of generating offensive opportunities. Here comes one for A&M. McDonald up the right side of the pitch, looking for the overlapping run. There to give it to her was Beckman, and A&M wins a throw. Jai Smith also in the game for the Aggies. Regular contributor off the bench over the past couple years. Nesbeth muscling off a defender. Knocks it back to Roque. Roque hasn't been asked to do a whole lot here tonight. She's usually not with the way Florida State possesses the ball in the attacking and the defending half, the attacking half for Florida State. But again, Roque, when she was called upon last year in that NCAA run, those saves against Duke and Virginia were breathtaking. Oh, there's no question. I mean, she, she came in. It, it's, it's really remarkable to see the poise, and that's the biggest thing Mark Reborian has said about her, that she's very steady and level-headed. You know, sometimes with freshmen, Especially as a goalkeeper, you know, you let one goal go by and it can get the best of you. But for Roque, if one did, you know, she, it didn't let, it didn't rattle her in the long run or throughout the course of the game. So she's very level-headed and wise above her years in a lot of senses, in a lot of different ways, which is exactly what Mark Gregorian loves about her. Can anybody find the opening act here tonight? Four minutes left. Oh, this is Zhao. She's in some space under her left foot blocked. Chaotic defending, desperation defending by A&M. Katie Smith, once again, another shutdown defensive play. Yuji Zhao was finding a groove, cutting it all around, but Katie Smith was not fooled. Florida State now looks for the long ball over the top. Deflection one by Carl. Resets it to Flynn, now Florida State will look to attack again. Flynn punches it forward. Here is Pereira, Pereira to Zhao. Zhao once more. Some space now for Bissell. Puts on a shot, Caldwell. Was asked some questions, she came up with the answer. But that's the best Florida State's looks now in its build-up play. Best open look in the 18 box for sure, Aria. Excellent recognition on the services. Maria over to Zhao, quick one touch. Right outside the 18, and Bissell just takes a shot. You know, that's something Florida State just needed to do, I think, over the last 20 minutes. They haven't been able to find a clear open shot. Just take one to get yourself into a right state of mind. And take a chance. Good things will happen if you put the ball on net. Howell slips it to herself, goes down, no whistle. And Howell had a question for Leland Grant. Kate Colvin giving Jalen Howell a little bit of the business. Flynn. But Howell is uh, not happy, to say the least. She's been out there all, all half long, so she's one of the only few outside of the back line. Zhao, dynamic. The flair on the ball, the confidence. Receives it here. You just see the cool, calm collectiveness that she has with it. On to her left. Howell, perhaps the best center midfield in the country, resides here in Tallahassee. Now what can EY do with it? On to her right foot. Gaps closing quickly from the Aggies. Howell turns, surveys, Madrill now. Punches it up ahead for herself again. Quick onto the ball where the Aggies back line. Get sick. The back we, line is just, it's, it's bending, but it's not breaking at all. I think they're, I mean, this, look, this is the team from Texas. They know about heat. They know about stamina. They know how they have to 
hold things together so they don't get fatigued either. Yes, and this is a team that was in the quarterfinals last year, lost 1-0, just one game away from the College Cup. They're pretty good too, preseason favorites in the SEC. A lot of experience on that back line too. We mentioned Smith and Sample. They're the senior, a senior and a junior a lot of times, a lot of minutes earned back there. Carl to EY. Gets the ball back. Knowles find the safety valve. It's Howell. Gosh, she's everywhere, isn't she? Forward, back, supporting her defense. Just find six. Usually good things will happen. To right the, to, to right the ship for the Seminoles. 33 usually does pretty well with the ball, too. Now Pavlisko, the veteran, gets to the middle of the pitch. And again, cutting off the angles was that Aggie's back line, but Nesbeth quickly back onto it for Florida State. Just two bulls locking horns, are you? A lot of give and take. Push comes to shove, and nothing's broken yet for either squad. We'll see the adjustments made at halftime by each of these teams as Coach Guerreri go back to the same tactic of, of trying to close, because you have to take a chance. At some point, you've got to push some, some numbers forward. You had one early on. You had one early on up the wing. You had Miley Hayes get the run that she wanted to get. Final seconds, ball pushed ahead, Caldwell catches at the penalty spot. And after 45 minutes, the ACC favorites, the SEC favorites, nil-nil, a deadlock at zero so far. What else did you expect? It's been a defensive battle. Neither team has really been able to find that icebreaker. And Yuji Zhao had a couple of moments. Natalie Abel was strong in her cameo here in the last 10 minutes of the first half. But Trevor, pretty much what we expected. Florida State will possess. A&M will try and find opportunities on the counter. And for Coach Kerkorian and Guerreri, uh, nothing venture, nothing gained so far. No, no panic, I don't think, with either team uh, to going into halftime. I think they find a way to get into their midfield. It has not been tough. It's not been easy for them to get through tonight. Just moments away from the start of the second. And here we go, 45 down, 45 to go between the Seminoles and the Aggies. And it'll be again Florida State in the all-whites. Aggies in the maroons with the stripes across the chest. Tallahassee, Florida, the Seminole Soccer Complex, one of the best home field advantages in the game. Aria Masuti, Trevor DeGroote, Emily Peters. Bringing you ACC, SEC soccer here from the capital city of the Sunshine State. Florida State started to work its way into the game. You could see them kind of feeling their way out in the first 45, Trevor. It's going to be up to some of those players in the attacking half to find that magic moment. Yeah, and I think I think would be would be good for them, Aria, also for a key for the second half is see if they can get the ball around in the midfield a little bit more. You know, this is Florida State likes the back line to really have that ball in the midfield and just start to suffocate. But with that, you don't have a lot of passing lanes. You don't have a lot of open grass. And Texas A&M has done a nice job of just reading the terrain and just locking those spaces up for Florida State and they can't move. So I think if you can give the ball to Jenna Nyswanger, to Claire Robbins in the midfield a bit more, maybe they can get some runs to open things up. Yeah, and you know, watching some of the game tape of teams that have had success, success against Florida State, the Knowles, at some points, if the goals aren't coming, they start to press a little bit. They open their gaps up and their shape just a little bit out of desperation, and that can be the opportunity when you find the counterattack goal. That is, it is a risk for Florida State if they start doing that a little bit more. However, Push comes to shove. you got to make something happen if you want to come away with the W. So and that's the thing, though, is that both these teams know how to capitalize on opportunities and mistakes. So that's the game you're playing here in this very interesting chess match of a soccer game. Nice, Wonger. Angling her way, circling around, finding space, finding a teammate. Flynn, center back to center back tandem. To Madrill, stepping in front. 
for the interception. Smith just again, the another captain. one touch, just sending it back the other way. And there she is again, just an incision to get her teammate Olivieri the ball. Now a mistake. There by Bates, Florida State. It's Robbins. Robbins towards the center of the pitch, inside the 18. Lynch onto her left foot, plays it across, the shot off the crossbar. It was nice, Swanger. Oh, the moment was almost there for Florida State. Everything excellent except the finish. Nyswanger couldn't believe it. Punishing the crossbar with a thundering blast. Just a perfect ball by Christina Lynch, Ari. That it was perfectly placed in Nyswanger just with too much power and too much loft. You see the run that they got off the turnover by Texas A&M? Excellent through ball right towards the end line and just too close with that amount of power and loft by Nyswanger. It wasn't by much, though. It was square almost off the crossbar, just a little bit up. Got to get that down just a touch more. Now the pressure on. Oh, Roque had to have an answer there. Reaches out. What a dangerous pass by Madrill. Now Carl Lynch again. She's been active, stepping in front of it. it was Macy Kolb. And watch out for Cobb too. You know, we talked we've talked at length about Sample and Smith, but Cobb's a, a, the back liner who has the most assists last season. So she can come up like a Gabby Carl or a Kristen Pavlisko for Florida State, start generating offensive chances. She's the one who can flirt herself up into the midfield. Now you see AM pressing a little bit higher, which is creating some more space for Florida State. Good ball ahead, Lynch. Active up ahead. Olsen puts it! Does that cross the line? No. Olsen lobbying from the side judge. We'll probably get a couple looks at this. But again, Florida State twice off the crossbar. Conversation being had by Leland Grant. And as of now, no goal. But again, now Olsen and Nyswanger from point blank range, back to back, just missing the mark off the crossbar. And that's the difference for Florida State. Is this the VAR? It is, stoppage of play. So we'll get another look at it. What a ball from Lynch to Olsen on the penalty spot. Too great. That oh, looks like close. It, it looks like the ball lands maybe just beyond that end line. It's going to be close. We need another camera angle to see for sure. But a Christina Lynch coming out of the gates here in these first four or five minutes with some excellent balls back towards the center. We'll take a timeout. Here we go, Aria. This may be another better look. Right from the behind the goal. Goes down. Wow, that that's looks close. Like it looks like a goal. It, you could definitely see the ball land on green. It's not on the white. You can tell it's landing in the green. The question is, is that ball fully across the line? If there's a side angle we could see, we could definitely confirm that. So now qu questions are going to be asked by Leland Grant. And two great opportunities for the Seminoles here coming out firing and putting the Aggies on their heels. Trevor, the question now becomes, is that enough evidence for Leland Grant to be able? He's got 100% be able to say that's a goal. We're not in the opinion game. That's not on us. That was close. It's close. The question is, it can't be 99% sure. It's got to be 100% sure. And this is a big moment. Yeah, and he's looking at the monitors right now with the angles that are available to him, and it's up to him. And again, that best look is the one from right behind the goal, because that one right there, we're seeing one on our monitors from a front side, a high angle shot from center midfield. And it's not, it's not 100% clear, but there's one from behind the goal that makes it seem more likely than not that it did cross. But again, you have to be 100% sure, and probably even 110% sure to award the first goal of the game on a video assistant review. This is such a difficult call to make. And remember, it's a no call on the field, so it ha you have to have the indisputable evidence to overturn it. And I think if it was the other way around, they would certainly look at it, but it's tough to make the call either way. And you see Leland Grant, the head official, 
struggling with a decision. It's decision time now. Goal or no goal? After review, no goal. Not 100% from Leland Grant. The video, again, it's got to be 110% sure. You've got to have indisputable evidence that it was a goal. And, you know, at the end of the day, you kind of have to agree with them. That, that looks likely that it's in the goal, but that's not 100%. Absolutely correct. That's the right decision to make. It's it's tough because if, if, if it was a call goal on the field, it might you might agree with that too. So it's yeah, it was how close it was from being one nil for Florida State, and really it could be two nil. Yeah, Florida State starting to find something they like. Christina Lynch starting to put beautiful balls into the center of the 18. Yeah, she's just being really good on the run. Here's another one for the Knowles. Now Brown, Brown to the end line. This touch finds it. Caldwell off the short up. Trying to find Olson, just centered right in front of Caldwell. But the junior is stepping up, and she'll need to now. She got a she got a rude awakening here in these first five minutes of play. Saved by the crossbar, Aria. And again, you know, you can look at it as is oh so close. But for Florida State, they've talked about being able to finish quality chances, and the Seminoles. Well, let's be honest; those are two balls that probably need to find the back of the net. They could be two nil. And this one could be in desperation mode for A&M. Especially a team like Texas A&M, who is very, who is veteran savvy, who knows and has been around the block, knows how to win close games into the tournament. I mean, it's just, you know, and you see there, Texas A&M versus a number one opponent, two and nine all time. You know, that's not a good record, but all things considered, you're still getting wins against the number one opponent. It's not easy for obvious reasons. They're ranked, the opponent is ranked number one for a reason. And Texas A&M's been on this stage before. How about the physicality from Robbins just winning the ball back? Knowles trying to quickly counter. And A&M, what can they do with it? This ball punched back. Oh, that's good work. Nice Great. turn. There from Hayes. Up ahead, Pavlisko wins the ball back and is tugged down. And a foul will go the other way now. It's Pavlisko, she gives the thumbs up saying it looks like she will be okay, but yeah, Hayes doing a good job, Ponte coming up. And it looks like Ponte gets a little bit of a hook on Pavlisko, which drove her to the ground. Good, I think it's good contact from both players in a way. A little bit rough going down to the ground, but Pavlisko walking it off, the senior out of Middleburg. 67th career start for Kirsten Pavlisko. Started every game she has ever played at Florida State dating back to the 2018 National Championship year, are you? No doubt about it. A key figure for Florida State for years now. All right, Trevor, game starting to open up. You're seeing both teams expand their shapes a little bit, taking a little bit more chances. A&M, you thought they might in the second half after they build some confidence, push some more numbers forward. We'll see how that goes for A&M. This is the best possession that they've had really all game. And Brown takes it away. Now the spaces are opening up. Here is Nyswanger up ahead to Olsen. Olsen's first touch. A bit heavy. Was able to get around Sample. But Smith so good. Recovering for her teammate. Carlina Sample up ahead. And Macy called. Not able to run onto it. It's just when you think you get the ball back and you have maybe a little bit of space as you saw right there for the Aggies, then fatigue starts to set in because you've been suffocated so much defending and being on your heels that some of those touch passes that you practice, maybe you're a little bit more exhausted now as the st later stages of the game pops up, and that's exactly what Florida State loves to do game in, game out. Heavy ball ahead. Shielding the defender is Smith. That's really good from the captain. And, and to your point, though, Trevor, you see some of these first touches for A&M. Uh, they look a little rusty, and it's because they haven't had the ball. In soccer, you got to be able to build up with confidence, get a couple of touches, get your feet wet, and A&M just hasn't really had much on the ball. They've been chasing the whole game, so some of this possession for them is new in this 90 minutes tonight. Yeah, and you, saw, you just saw right there Kenna Caldwell with a ball, right, comfort, comfortable, but just kicks it out of bounds, you know. There's a little bit, maybe a little bit of nerve setting in, a little bit of nervousness by the Aggies. They got to settle themselves down, just string a few simple, easy passes together, but you got to get the ball back first. And 
Florida State just loves to play the keep away game. Oh, that piece of skill from Nye Swanger, turning her defender. And now Florida State will work it around. Flipped ahead. Pavlisko, Brown. Brown, known for her speed, will be asked to do something in possession. Loses the ball. Now can A&M get numbers in support? There's some help. Up ahead. Running onto it, gets it from her left back position. And for the first time tonight, Lauren Flynn was asked to do some heavy lifting. Go to the end line. Yeah, and she got there. First time Texas A&M has gotten that deep all game long. Good string of passes. A good challenge to at least get FSU to work a little bit out of their out of their offensive shape. Now the game's starting to adapt a little bit. The personality starting to change. And usually in the first game of the year, Ari, and, and typically at soccer matches, and it, overall, you know, you're, it's a feeling out process the first 45 minutes, especially against an opponent you're not used to seeing in conference or you don't typically see year to year. But these are two teams that, you know, it, it really is a feeling out process knowing how cautious you have to be if you make a mistake. Haven't seen Howell much here in the second half. Was able to get some action there. Knock it back as you see the game slow down to a crawl. You see A&M pushing a little bit higher with four players. That's something Santa Clara did well. They were able to create the mistake and pounce. They're trying to force the ball into the air perhaps more, Aria, which will give the Aggies a chance to at least go for 50-50 balls. Maybe it gets them, settles, the, settles it down, gets it back to their back four. Maybe they can reset for possession. That's why you bring it up a little bit more. They were setting themselves back early in the game. Florida State was able to dictate the pace and do what they want with it. Lynch between the legs, dummy. Can she get around her defender? Oh, really good work by Cobb. Macy Cole, the senior from McKinney in the Lone Star State. Coach Guerrero said one of the most influential influential players on the team, a stoppage of play. Looks like Yuji Zhao will come in for Clara Robbins. Zhao's hair glistening in the wind. Hasn't needed to put the conditioner in it just <laughs> thus far tonight with the humidity being what it is. She hasn't had, she, hey, she didn't get the start so she gets to sit on the bench and absorb and learn and, and analyze a little bit. She had a few chances in that first half as a foul is called against the Knowles. But if you can have her, a player of her caliber and talent, fresh coming off the bench in the later stages when everybody else is tired and just trying to hang in, that's what we've been speaking to about the depth for Florida State, Aria. The senior from Shanghai, who has been a dazzling player in her four years in Tallahassee. Oh, now Olivieri pulls down Nice Swanger, and it'll go the other way. Wow, that, I mean, she pulled down her hair, too. I mean, that is yellow card material. At least that's just one person's opinion. Olivieri has not had the ball often. Maybe she didn't yank the hair, probably the collar of the jersey. Couldn't tell from that angle, but that looked very dangerous as Nice Swanger was pulled down from the back of her head or to the her neck. That's a dangerous play. Icewanger's goal in the national championship game momentarily gave Florida State the lead. Was able to just caress it off the side post. And it trickled into the net where Florida State was up 1-0. Carl. Howell. Turning, working against McDonald. That's excellent work by the Aggies. You know, Jalen Howell is the playmaker to try and generate things to get them going. And you know, the Aggies are just sticking lady on lady, just put trying to find the who to stick to and not let get a run. Carl has pinched inside. And now Howell freelancing. How about that? Not bad from the senior. 
She's trying to work with Christina Lynch, and I can't blame her based off of Lynch's first five minutes in this half. Just under 31 minutes left in regulation. If this thing ends nil-nil, it'll go to overtime. Two 10-minute periods. And if it's still at a draw, the game ends in a tie. No penalty kicks in the regular season. Now Zhao. Pocket of space to work with off the back of Olivieri's head. A painful yet effective way to stop an attack. Now Nyswanger. Had Olsen. Oh, how about Sample? Needed to put a lot more mustard on that one. Sample with the recognition, though. Now McDonald finally getting to showcase her speed. Up the pitch she goes. Needs numbers in support. Looking for the angle. Working against a defender. And Flynn watches it go out for a seminal goal kick. That's really good by Lauren Flynn. McDonald's an athlete that has definitely got the eye of Coach Gieri for the future. But she and she can see she definitely has the speed to change the complexion of a game if she needs to. But you need numbers, like you said, Ari. And Miley Hayes was just on the far end of the of the pitch there. And with Flynn cracking down, there really wasn't a whole lot of places for her to go. She needed to wait, and Florida State's defense right back there to suffocate. Carl. How? Pavlisko loses the ball out. It'll be a throw for Florida State. And if you look on your screen as the throw is won by A&M, you see Howell and the way that she's dropped back, Trevor. It allows Florida State to change shapes and allow some of those outside backs to get forward because you have that support of the center backs in the back line. Yeah, it, it, that's the shifting nature of what Jalen Howell is all about. I mean, she's just, she can play D, she can play offense so well, and, and where she's positioned can dictate what Florida State can do in terms of maneuverability and the risks that you can take by going up the flanks. And they have the athletes in Pavlisko and Carl on the back to really do that. And then when you go even further with Jody Brown and, Kristen, and Christina Lynch as well, so depending on where she is, kind of maps things out. Here they come the Knowles. Brown putting her track speed to work. Not able to find the corner there and not able to turn it. And so it's a goal kick for a and Got to give a lot of credit to Katie Smith. There's a lot of speed for Florida State up top. And Jody Brown's as fast as they come on this FSU roster and Smith Proving her durability. She led the team in minutes last year. She can go deep and stick with the best athletes in the country. Pante on at the end of it, but it goes out for a throw. So after the early rush area by Florida State, things have sort of settled down now the last 10 minutes or so. So now's the chance of what, what does Florida State want to do? It looks like they're going back a little bit more to that slow but set, steady build, one rung up the ladder at a time. But AM has adjusted, as you mentioned earlier, just playing a little bit higher. Try and force Florida State to do things like this for 50-50 balls. Again, Sample has been asked a lot tonight. She's come up huge multiple times. If you're just joining us, nil-nil here, but Florida State's hit the crossbar twice in the early moments of the second half. A couple of chances that I think both Nyswanger and Olsen will want to have back. But AM growing confidence as the match has gone along. Taking a few more chances after a first 45 in which Florida State dictated the tempo at will. How about that from Carl? Turns her defender. Now Florida State, can they find the moment here? Carl to Lynch, Lynch diving inside. Macy Cobb did just enough. Jai Smith finding out what a gold medalist is all about. And then I think she got a taste of what the Seminole Soccer Complex pitch is all about though too. I think a little bit slippery, obviously it's a, a muggy night. But a good job by Florida State working their way up the ladder. Just a little bit of a strong touch by Lynch. 
Brown running on to the ball there. Ooh, Knocks it forward, and it's cut off again by Smith. I think Brown may have rushed that just a bit. She had a little bit of space where she could have analyzed and, for, and read a little bit of what the midfield around the 18-yard box was all about there. How about that from Flynn? Little shake and bake to try and get inside, but really, really good work by AM to win the ball back. Great recovery by Hayes. That freshman is getting a lot of work tonight. She's hanging in there. Pounds gets it. Looking for Pounds again. Howell onto the end of it. And the Knoll's not in danger there. And so Flynn will take her time. I mean, eons of time here for AM just kind of retreating and letting Florida State possess the ball and bring it up. So can the Knolls find some build-up play? Can they connect their passes and find the first goal of the evening, or will AM find a magic moment late? We've got just under 25 minutes for an answer. Beckman. AM finding some passes. Madrill, Howell, now to Zhao. Florida State on the ball where they're so strong. Here's Nyswanger. Nyswanger's first touch lets her down. And quickly Smith onto the end of it. Carl, the Canadian international with a gold medal in hand. Down the left side, her cross deflected by Sample. One of the best defenders, not just in the SEC, but in the country. A lot of physicality here and going down was number eight, Miley Hayes, and she stays down for a moment. Able to shake it off. The freshman from Spring, Texas. Yeah, you really find out a lot in your first game, you know, what you're all about. And to be against the number one team in the country will really test your mettle. And little 8v8 action right here. Might be a light little shove by Flynn, not sure, but really the freshman trying to hang in and make a difference for her team here on the road. Beckman does well to get inside the teeth of the defense. This ball pretty good. Chance for A&M though, and it goes wide. That's not good enough. Hayes with the shot. And you saw Miley Hayes kind of put her hands on her head afterwards. I think she realized she had more time and space than she initially thought. This Look at this ball. Great job by Beckman, just slicing through Florida State. She did have time. Just a little bit of time. Just took a shot, just took a one-time shot just to fire something at the net. You know, you talk to coaches and they say you want to speed your play up while also slowing the game down. And it's funny, that dichotomy, because you want mentally to be able to slow the game down around you, but at the same time understand that connecting is going to be quick and you're not going to have a lot of time to physically make passes. A couple of substitutions. What do you got, Trevor? Looks like Ron EY is back in for Florida State. Take over for Christina Lynch. Bissell's also back in for FSU to take over for Jody Brown. So Marco Corian going with that bench on the wingers. A couple of internationals here, Aria. Matter of fact, Florida State has players representing 10 different countries, including the U.S. That's not uncommon for FSU. They, <laughs> Marco Corian seems to get the best that the world has to offer. Howell, dispossessed. Pounds knocks it back. Smith, lefty boot. Powers it ahead. Now Zhao flicks it to Nyswanger. And back to Flynn. Long ball up ahead. Oh, Caldwell. Had to, be, had to be there quickly. Olsen was, was approaching, and in due time, but Caldwell again. That long ball by Flynn was just about three yards too much, Aria. I think if that's just a, right at the top of the key, I think Olsen has a shot to at least put a head on the ball to get it behind Caldwell. Very close call and a heads-up play by the junior.
Florida State asks so much and has so much confidence in its center backs year in and year out. Not that long ago was Malia Berkeley and Heather Payne having to be the tandem. And so what does Florida State do? It takes a couple of players who have been in the attack in the past and move the center back. That's just an excellent touch ball by Gabby Carl, and she may get rewarded here if she can track it down, but not quite. And for Florida State, a runner-up finish a year ago. Uh, another program out supporting was a runner-up a year ago out in Oklahoma City. Emily with the Florida State softball team. That's right. I'm down here with some of the Florida State softball players. They're very excited to be back here in Tallahassee and supporting their neighbors over here at the soccer field. Josie? How does it feel to be back? It feels great to be back, and obviously back here supporting our Seminole sisters. We share a building with them, so getting out here sooner than later and cheering them on on their first uh, home opener, which is awesome. Great, and I'm sure seeing all this action has you all very pumped to get back to training and back back to it. Yep, we're ready. We're ready for sure, that's for sure. All right, well, thank you. Go no. That's awesome stuff there from Emily. Good work to find the softball team. And Zhao hoping to give them something to cheer about. That ball crosses the end line. Josie Muffley, Florida State shortstop, has played some second base, has been on Sports Center's top 10 multiple times. You see them waving. What a run and what excitement they provided Florida State's fan base for a couple of weeks there. Who can forget Landers hit against LSU to send them to OKC and then the magical run that ended just one win short. Olsen has that one deflected. And it'll be a corner for Florida State. Well, both both programs here, Arya, just in that championship game, just coming up just a tad bit short, right across the way, right here at the so Seminole Soccer Complex, is Joanne Graff Field, where Seminole softball and Lonnie Alameda make things happen on a weekly basis in the spring. Talk about legendary coaches. You've got Krikorian and Alameda sharing the same building. Well, and also, I mean, we can't be we have to, can't be remiss of Bobby Bowden passing away yeah. and the Florida State soccer program wearing the patches. For yes, the legendary Bobby Bowden tonight and the, for the rest of the season. Just speaks to the, the commitment of the community and, and just the togetherness of Florida State University athletics. And there's no better legend synonymous with Florida State and probably in a lot of college sports than what Bobby Bowden did. And they've just generated, and, there's been, and it's kind of taken a, a life of its own at Florida State because a lot of coaches have stuck around for a long, long time. Leonard Hamilton, Mike Martin. We've seen Mark Corian here and Lonnie Alameda. Nice swung her on to her left. Now an EY offsides. But just a lot of legendary performances, a lot of legendary coaches and knowledge coming through Tallahassee, Florida and Florida State Capitol. You see the Bobby Patch. RIP to the GOAT. No better, and not just a great coach, but one of the kindest men, and I think one of the best men in all of collegiate athletics, and maybe in a lot of, in, in all of sports, Ari, just a, a man that really changed the lives of young men in the football program and inspired an entire community, and in a lot of ways built the entire university. I mean, from what Doe Campbell Stadium was when he first got there to what it is now, and then the way this university just rallied behind and just grew from that, has really created a lot of what soccer is all about and what a lot of these programs that Florida State has is all about. And the, no doubt the, the money, the, the attention that FSU football brought over those 30 years has helped kind of trickle into the rest of the sports. You see a shot there of a couple of Florida State players that we showed you with the patch on and the Knowles will be honoring Bobby Bowden all year. I can only imagine what the football team is going to do on opening night Sunday in sep on September 5th against Notre Dame. I know that will be a special night, but definitely we'll be paying homage to the, to the man from Alabama who came to Tallahassee. A&M trying to have a special moment of their own here on opening night. This is a good ball. Roque has to go up and get it. She did just that. Christina Roque hasn't been asked much tonight. The 27 saves. Last season, big moment after big moment in the NCAA tournament. 
And she went up strong with two hands here. Just a, night out, a nice outlet pass from Taylor Pounds to Lauren Getzik. Just a little bit too close to the, the goal line. Just an easy catch for Roque, but yeah, that's one of the few times she's even touched the ball with her gloves. As you see, they're trying to get Barbara Olivieri involved, and she just has not had the ball much at her feet. What can AM do here? Not much as Florida State takes the ball. Nice swonger, slips it ahead. Olsen running on, left foot, Caldwell. Had shifted onto her line. An excellent job by Katie Smith again, too, of making it difficult, closing that angle down. Great job by Lauren Flynn of getting this going and to get the ball away from Olivieri and then Nicewanger picking things up through ball. Perfectly placed. Caldwell making the adjustment. And as you said, Smith has just been on Olsen pretty much all night and doing a nice job of not letting her get a very good quality opportunity yet. Coach Although Guerrero. she has had one off the crossbar. Yeah, and Coach Guerrero just sung her praises about how great of a leader she is and just what she means to the back line, how everybody looks up to her. And between her and Sample, I mean, you don't have just arguably the best center back duo in the SEC. You're challenging for one of the best units in the college game, period. It's that good in College Station. No question. There's a lot of experience right there. And then above them is, is Kendall Bates, who they consider the glue. You haven't heard a lot of her from her tonight, but she's just a good distributor, and she get things, gets things going in times of adversity and, and when times are tough, and this is the moment now. So number nine, number 19, Kendall Bates, trying to dig in, and Texas A&M in general just in these last 14 minutes or so. There you see number 14, Carissa Beckman, the freshman from San Antonio. And Coach Guerrero said, we just want to see her be more consistent, impacting games. That's that's an area we know she's technically gifted. And Coach Guerrero said, look, this is going to be a game that the learning curve is steep. And we're going to be asked a lot of questions tonight. They have been, but so far, you got about 14 minutes left to push the number one team into overtime. A&M has passed the test with flying colors. Can they find a goal and stun Florida State on its home field where they haven't lost in 13 consecutive opening days? Matter of fact, Florida State's won 90% of its home games under Mark Krikorian, period. ACC, non-conference, it doesn't matter. And the last time Florida State lost a non-conference game, it came from a team in the SEC. It was the Florida Gators. It was 2-1. to one. And that game was hectic. The Knowles hit the crossbar twice in the final five minutes. The point being, you don't just walk into Tallahassee on this field and come away with a victory against Florida State. It takes everything you have and then some. And we'll see if Florida State continues its strong play at home. Bissell has it deflected. Howell, strong in the air, wins it. You see the commitment that Howell has right there? Doesn't matter if she's going to hit the deck. She just wants to make a play to get the ball away from Texas A&M's playmakers and back to the feet of her teammates. That's the commitment of a leader, and that's the commitment of someone who knows her talent and what she's capable of to flip the script. You don't get called. You don't get called into a camp with Julie Ertz, with Lindsey Horan, unless you're pretty good at center midfield. And they think Jalen Howell's got a chance to be uh, an important piece for that senior national team for a very long time in the future. And a lot of departing players, you know, Carly Lloyd's retired. You expect Megan Rapino to leave, perhaps. You never know, but there might be some openings there, and I would imagine Jalen Howell is right at the top of that list. Zhao puts it into the box, Sample. Heads it away, Howell now under her left. Is this the moment it's blocked again? Sample, incredible defending, two in a row, now physicality picking up. Bodies flying to the turf, Olivieri said twice. They got the back of my leg twice. I can play on though. Yeah, Leland Grant's been pretty consistent. No yellow cards tonight, has let both teams really play a physical match. Now down the left flank. It was Katie Smith from the center back position trying to take matters into her own hands. But the Florida State defense not asked too many times tonight to come up big, but every time they have been. They've had the answer. But in that sequence, Ari, you saw Texas A&M did not give up on the play. They were the one who took advantage right there. You see Smith 
just like you said, making things happen. She's She spent all night on defense shutting things down, and she just thought to herself, you know what, I want to make something happen on the opposite end. I'm sick and tired of spending my time at the 18-yard box. I'm going to go to their 18-yard box. Yeah, you know, Coach Guerrero said, uh, we asked him, uh, what do you want to see from her this year? She And, and he said, we want to see her uh, start to dictate uh, some attacks on her own, start to create some attacks. And that time she said, uh, you know what, forget build-up play. I'm making a run. I'm going 90 yards. Time's ticking. You want to shock the world. You want to come into Tallahassee and upset number one. Statement win. Yeah, those, nil nil here. Those are the moments to do it. Yeah, no doubt about it. A win like this, Trevor, would be huge for AM. I mean, the confidence that they want to play with, some substitutions. Oh boy, a bunch of them. Three for AM, one for Florida State. Bear with us. Looks like Clara Robbins comes back in for the Knowles. And for AM, you've got Miley Hayes, Mia Pante. I didn't see the other number. Looks like Micaiah McDonald coming back in. So three freshmen. How about the trust that Coach Guerrero has in the youngsters? Eight newcomers, one of the best recruiting classes in the country. And they're all great teammates. Coach Guerrero said, we have turned down excellent players that have been great for other schools because we didn't think they'd be great teammates. We build family in A&M. Players don't transfer often. A lot of players with sisters, moms, dads, brothers who Graduated from AM. Heck, Coach Guerrero's son punts for Jimbo Fisher and the AM football team. That ball is excellent. Unbelievable ball ahead. Bissell. Olsen in support. Bissell puts on a shot. Caldwell stretches out to make the save. What an excellent service by Florida State for Bissell to get a second shot in this game. Clara Robbins recognizing the open space just over the head of the midfielder. Bissell recognizing maybe she had a little bit more time for another step, but just decided to take one for the team and just put one on net again. Here comes EY. Now here comes the Japanese international putting it across. Robbins couldn't get on to the end of it. Two out in front and two strong by EY. Couple more substitutions now. This time FSU. It'll be Leilani Nesbeth and Jody Brown. Bissell, Good work. Bissell and Olsen depart. By Bissell and Olsen, absolutely. So, so putting some speed back into the game. Leilani Nesbeth. Got a lot of playing time last year, made a difference. Now Zhao prancing with the ball. Over to Flynn. Nesbeth had a great ACC tournament as well, Aria. One goal and three assists. She made herself known in the big times and big stages of the fall of 2020. And earlier this week, uh, I think Emily was the one who asked Coach Krikorian, who's the player that keeps it loose? And Leilani Nesbeth cracking jokes. Coach Krikorian said, you kind of need one of those on a team full of intensity. But you also need some levity, and that's exactly what Leilani brings, a good balancing act. And now's the serious time with under eight to go. Who can tally and make the difference? Brown surveying the field, didn't see anything she liked. So she finds the safety valve. Florida State will try and reset. Robbins turns towards the middle of the pitch. Outside of the boot pass, and wow. it's wonderful. EY's ball, not good enough. Oh, you can tell Nesbeth really wanted that ball. EY just put it right to Caldwell. Nesbeth had a, an immaculate game against North Carolina in the ACC tournament last fall in the championship game. One goal, two assists. That game was a thriller. 3-2 win for Florida State. Usually always is between those two clubs. Florida State's won seven of the last 10 ACC championships. If you want to talk about dominance in this league, there's a handball. That went off the official. <laughs> and Lonnie Grant, got, Leland Grant actually got a little piece of that one, Aria. So he had no choice but to stop it right at the midfield. I had my head turned. I thought it was a handball. <laughs> You're okay, man. We have two sets of eyes up here for a reason. Good to see Leland Grant getting a part of the game. Yeah, and he, and he had the tough call earlier on, Ari, of deciding whether that crossbar shot by Olsen was a good a good goal or a no goal, and just not enough evidence to overturn it. That could be the thing that keeps this game nil-nil if it no one can come through big time for either side. Just over six minutes to play before we head to overtime. 
And in college soccer, there's no stoppage time, so we'll go directly to a 10-minute period. It is golden goal. So as soon as they, if a goal is found, the game ends. But there is no penalty kicks. You'll play two 10-minute periods. If you're still a draw, it ends in a draw. Here's Zhao. Can Florida State, the reigning national runner-up, continue to push its winning streak at home to 14 on opening days? By the way, this is a seminal program that not too long ago won 34 games in a row on this field. Zhao. Wins the ball in a dangerous area for Florida State. Trying to find the cross. Nesbeth back to goal. Now here's Robbins onto her left. Great Robbins moves. dicing her way in. Lefty shot. And fingertip save. Corralling it back in was Caldwell. Mesmerizing work by Robbins, Aria. Working with the ball right at the top of the 18. Didn't get all of it on the shot. Here's the service by Zhao to Nesbeth. Just outside the 18, just look at the clinical work that she puts in, just trying to slice and dice. That might have gone off the bar if it has a little bit more spump on it, but nice job of finding its way through, and what an amazing one-handed stop. Caldwell has just stood tall all night. Under five to play. Is there a magic moment for Florida State? Dangerous ball in. A&M, hesitation. Able to def deflect and clear. I think at this stage of the game, Aria, Florida State is content with just keeping it, keeping the pressure on, knowing that they do have two 10-minute periods as a possibility. Just keep it going and to see if they can wear Texas A&M out. But, you know, the Aggies have proven they are as good of a team in terms of stamina as they'll come. On to the end line. And a corner won by Florida State. Is that Emily Madrill finding her way up? Yes, it is. Madrill started her career on the outside backs where she regularly got forward in support of the attack. So it's an area that Florida State has been strong in seasons past. You look for Jalen Howell in moments like this. There she is walking up to the six. You know exactly where she's going to be. Sixth See, Oliveri, corner kick. Oliveri trying to figure out where she wants to be too. It's all up to Zhao. Zhao now. In swinging ball, header there glancing off to the left. And for Florida State, it's not going to be fruitful. Maybe perhaps one final substitution for AM. Yeah, Flynn was much closer to the, the end line. Just caught out of position trying to work her way back. Zhao just not having the curl or just no one in position. Olivieri, first touch, fails her, and it's a throw in for Florida State. Robbins trying to break through, a couple of defenders not able to. Bit of a log jam now towards the touch line, and Florida State does win a throw. Bates in, Colvin out for a &M. Carl to Nesbeth. Can a &M push this into overtime? Or does Florida State have a at-the-death moment in the waning moments of this one? Great move to create some space for Madrill. Madrill trying to dice her way in. Strong play, continues her run. Still Madrill towards the box. Robbins, opportunity, save Caldwell. Pounce, Robbins again. At the death, Florida State finds the answer. Who else, Clara Robbins? And with just under 90 seconds to go, Florida State 
in great position for another opening night win. Emily Madrill going back to her roots, gets things going, just cards her way up the Aggie defense. Just starts it from well outside. With a lot of momentum, great cut back outside the 18. An initial shot by Robbins, excellent job by Cobb of getting a hand. And Caldwell for a stop as well, but Robbins would not be denied. Florida State finding the answer, up 1-0. And looks like the clock could strike midnight here for the Aggies. One minute, and now 10 seconds remaining. Florida State might not be done yet. Nesbeth, numbers coming in support. Still Nesbeth gets it out to Brown. Oh, she was offside. Oh, and a bit of a brain fart for Jody Brown, who's got to know where she is on the field. Gives the Aggies a chance to at least work their way up quickly. Only with 50 seconds left, but again, Madrill finding her way to Robbins. A little bit of scuffle right there. Good save by Caldwell, but just you gotta find a way to hang on to it. Did all she can, but finally Florida State finds gold. And now 30 seconds left. AM just watching their chance waste away. Florida State found an answer. It took nearly 90 minutes. But again, Clara Robbins. Her seventh goal in two seasons for Florida State. Led the team with six last year. Battled back from injury. ACC tournament MVP and now hero tonight here in her senior year on opening night. Five seconds left. Madrill will dribble this one out. And Florida State once again victorious on opening day. Knowles won, Aggies nil, the Seminoles. They notch a top 10 victory, and that man right there, Mark Krikorian, still undefeated on opening night in Tallahassee. And you see that record against top-ranked teams continues to grow. Just a game of perseverance and will all game long from both sides, and you gotta give it up for the Aggies. They hung it tough all the way through. Really strong defensively, but it's really a story, as you said, Ari, of perseverance to, for uh, a story of perseverance for Clara Robbins, who's you know had to you know battle her way back from injury, try and find her place back again, and just get the time and earn it back. And last year was that moment for her to get those goals and get those opportunities, and she comes through big time as Florida State just finally found a way to get it done here in a big win and a top ten matchup to start things off in 2021. It's